welcome to this special Halloween episode of Draw This. In this episode, we'll be drawing a tombstone. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm using Corel Painter today, but you could follow along with just about any art application that has pencils. I'll start with a tall canvas here. I'll create a new layer to sketch on. And I'm going to be sketching using symmetry or mirror painting mode, as it's called in Corel Painter. I'm going to be sketching using the sketching pencil, and this is a custom brush I created. Now if I hold shift, I can draw straight lines, and I'm just going to indicate the base of the tombstone here. It'll just be two rectangles. And I'll do a taller rectangle on top of that. I'll round the top and curve the sides, and this will be the general shape for my tombstone. You could really do any kind of shape you want. I'm going to go ahead and give it a bit of a border, and I'll go ahead and give it some edges that go off into perspective. I'll also sketch a little bit of a skull here in the top center, and I'll add a few other little decorations just to fill in the rest of that negative space. Now I'm going to go ahead and disable symmetry so that I can paint asymmetrically, and I'll go ahead and erase some of these areas here where the lines should not be overlapping, just to clean it up. Once I'm finished, I'll turn mirror painting mode back on, and I'm going to add a little flourish down here in the bottom corners as well. Now I've done a pretty good job of eyeballing my vanishing point, which goes off toward the center, but I can go ahead and use perspective guides here in Corel Painter if I really want to make sure that my perspective is absolutely perfect. I'm going to go ahead and select the perspective guides tool, change the preset to one point standard horizon, and then if I drag the red horizon line up, I can reposition the vanishing point. Now I want to look at these green guides coming out of the vanishing point, and I want to line those up with the diagonal lines coming out from the base of my tombstone, and just try to match them up as close as you can. Now I did a pretty good job of drawing it in by eye, so I don't really need to fix this, but you could use this tool to fix that angle and get it going off into a proper perspective. Now when perspective guides are enabled, you can only draw in perspective. I can draw this horizontal line, but I'm locked into diagonal or horizontal lines. That is, until I turn off perspective guided strokes. Now hiding the visibility of the perspective guides does not disable perspective guided drawing. You need to do that up here in the properties bar by turning it off with this button. Now you'll be able to draw a freeform. So I'm going to draw these little shadows here that'll establish that the light is coming from the front on the left. And then I can go ahead and just use my eraser to clean up a few more of those guidelines and darken in some of those shadow areas. I'm going to go ahead and just thicken up some of these edges here and clean up the angles a bit. If your pen supports pen tilt, you can tilt your pen and shade with the side of your pencil to get a thicker, bolder line. So I'm just going to go and just add in a little bit more detail here in a few areas. And then I'll go ahead and add a little bit of stone texture here, just doing some little squiggly marks, leaving little breaks and gaps in them here and there. If it helps, you can even draw the negative space that you want to leave out, and you can draw in between that. That can help you not overdo it. And of course, you can always select your eraser, and you can go in and you can erase anywhere where you overshaded. I'll also use the eraser to clean up some of the edges surrounding the tombstone. Next, I'm going to add some three-dimensional depth if the light is coming from the left, and there are some things like the skull and these other embellishments sticking out, then there'd be a hard shadow cast over on the right side, opposite the light source. So I'm just going to make those edges darker. The thicker I do the lines, the more it's going to look like these things are standing out off of the surface. Next, I'm going to add some stone texture to the border. I'm going to go ahead and just use those same squiggly marks, just going back and forth and zigzagging and leaving a few little areas here and there so it looks like there's some dark areas of stone and some light areas of stone. It's best not to overthink it and just do it. I'm going to go ahead and create another layer here, and I'll just go ahead and name my layers middle and outer, that way I know exactly which layer I'm painting on. I'll go ahead and fill in this middle area now, just adding some stone texture. The stone's going to be carved a bit differently in this area, so I want the texture to look a little bit different. I'm making it a little bit darker and a little bit denser. I'll also want to separate some of the edges so that it's very clear that that border is separate from the middle part there. I may have to make it darker or make it lighter, it just really depends on what the light source is. Now on these lighter areas of the tombstone, I don't want those to be pure white so that I can add highlights later, so I do want to shade them just a little bit here, just using very light pressure with the side of my pencil. And I'll go through and just thicken up some of those edges a bit more again, just using my pencil tilted on the side to get a bolder line. I'm going to go ahead and merge those layers, and I'll just call them Tombstone, that way they're a single layer. And I'll go in here with my eraser and just erase a few little areas, just to kind of break it up a bit. I can also use my Dab Chalk Eraser, which is going to use a dab stencil, like it's at the dab stencil to paper, for example. Now I can erase using a texture. I, of course, want to make that texture a bit more contrasty, 
may want to play with the scale of it as well. But that removes a little bit of the pencil there and adds a bit of texture. Next, I'll go back to the sketching pencil and I'm going to go ahead and just create a new layer. I'll choose a darker gray and I'm going to add in some darker shadow areas. I want to use this pretty sparingly. I don't want to overdo it only in the darkest areas. I may want to change my paper back to basic paper as well. That adds some contrast and helps this look a lot less flat. I'm going to go ahead and name that layer dark and I'll add a new layer beneath the tombstone and the dark layers. I'll go ahead and fill that with a lighter kind of medium gray color just to fill it in so there's some contrast. And then in those lighter areas, I'll switch back to white and I'll go ahead and just use varying pen pressure to get a range of opacity and I'll bring back in some of those lighter areas on the parts that stick out. I'll go ahead and add an additional layer and I'll add some lighter values to that layer as well, just like I did with the darker layers earlier. Just highlight some edges and add some little cracks here and there. Now I'll go ahead and just merge those layers down so this is easier to work on. That'll let me paint and erase without having to switch between too many layers. Let's create a new layer on top of the tombstone now, and we'll go ahead and select a different paper texture. Let's try the organismal paper textures called polypay wool. I'll use that along with the glazing chalk to add a layer of texture over everything. I'm making sure to keep my paint within a selection that I created from the tombstone so that I'm not accidentally painting onto the background here. I'm gonna repeat that on another new layer using a darker color. And I'll just reduce the opacity of that layers until I find a nice blend. I'll also go ahead and name my layers to tidy them up. Next, I'll switch to the Detail Oils brush. This is kind of like a pencil, but it doesn't have quite as much texture. And I'll use that with white just to scratch in some little lines here and there to add a few more little highlights. I'll just name that layer White Cracks so I know what it is. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer. I'm going to set it to a Multiply Composite method. I'm going to get a selection from the Tombstone and on that new layer, I'll just paint with the airbrush using black to go ahead and add a shadow to the shadow side of it. I'll reduce the opacity a bit. I'll go ahead and name that layer shadow. I'll create another layer while keeping that selection active. I'll set that layer to screen and I'll use the airbrush with white to airbrush in a highlight side. I'll go ahead and click on select none to deselect those selections. Next, I'm going to select the canvas layer, which is the background, and I'm going to fill it with a light gray color. I'm going to go to my papers panel and I'm going to reduce the scale of my paper texture. I'll create a new layer above the canvas. I'll call it paper texture and I'll set the composite method to overlay. I'll select a number five neutral gray and I'll go ahead and fill that layer with that neutral gray. Now you're not going to see anything happen until we go to surface control, apply surface texture. And now our artwork looks like it has a natural paper texture. I'm going to go ahead and move that layer above everything and I'll reduce the opacity a bit. I'm going to go back to the canvas layer. And I may want to make that just a little bit darker. Toning the canvas helps you see that paper texture. And now I'll just go ahead and continue adding a few more little details here and there. I'll also clean up the image wherever I see it needs fixing and cleaning up. There's not really much to say about this part of the process. It's really just going through and paying careful attention to your image, looking for areas you're not happy with and fixing them. Now, when I toned the canvas, I also made the tombstone a bit darker. So I'm going to create a layer underneath the tombstone called white under. And I'm going to go ahead and select white and I'll use my same sketching pencil with a bigger size pencil just to go ahead and fill in right underneath the tombstone. And that's essentially putting white back underneath and covering up some of that toned background where the tombstone is. So that brings back the lightness of those lighter areas that we put in earlier. Now I'm going to go back up to that paper texture layer and I'm going to reduce the opacity of it just to make it a bit more subtle. Another thing I can do to help it look more realistic is I can add a mask to that layer. I'll select black and the sponge. And with a large sponge, I'll just paint over that texture and that's going to erode some of it or conceal some of it. That breaks it up and helps it look a little less repetitive. I'll play with the opacity a bit more until I'm happy with my results. The next step is sort of optional. I think it might look kind of good to put a little bit of ground detail in front of the tombstone. So I'll create a bottom layer right above this white under layer. I'll select a gray color and I'll just use my pencil with the side of the pencil just to scrub in some stuff here. This could be grass or it could be dirt or reflection or really whatever you want. And you can tilt your pencil upright and you can get thinner lines. We'll have it kind of fade out as it starts to go into the background so that it's a bit more subtle. But just build it up however you like. You could even use a very fine brush and put in some little cracks and little pebbles and things like that. But I don't want it to be too distracting so I'm gonna keep it kind of simple. I can also put in some lighter colors as well. 
Let's return to the canvas layer, and I'm going to add a little bit of a backlight effect. I'll create a new layer above that called Glow, and I'm going to use my sketching pencil with white. I'll use the side of my pencil so I have a nice broad mark, and I'll use a light pressure to kind of fade it out. It makes the edge look like it's glowing. I'm using symmetry painting so that it's even on both sides. I'll also add a new layer for vignette, and I'll use a darker gray just to vignette the edges there to draw focus in toward the center. And then I'm getting near the end of the painting, so I'm gonna go ahead and just merge down all of my tombstone layers into a single layer, and that'll allow me to just really quickly go in and just clean this up, sampling colors from the background and cleaning up the edges and things like that. These are really just the finishing touches that are gonna bring the piece together. Now I think I wanna add a little bit more darkness over on the shadow side to make the skull stick out more, make a few of these things pop out a bit more. I'll add a couple more details, and with that, we have a finished pencil drawing of a tombstone. So that's it for this special Halloween episode of Draw This. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click the like button. And if you're interested in learning more about drawing with Corel Painter, check out some of my courses. There's a link in the video description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.